this is Bogdan Igor with Source Match, and thank you for joining us in this virtual roundtable discussion around the subject of recruitment, how it's changing, and what it means for you, whether you're a business owner, uh, a manager who's hiring, a recruiter, or a candidate. Joining us are five guests from very diverse backgrounds and industries. To begin with, Dr. Randy Wilt, he's a professional academician and lecturer at the McComb School of Business at University of Texas, as well as the chairman of Bell's International, a marketing products company. Devin Peters is also joining us. She's an experienced HR business partner at Safeguard Global, uh, who's managing HR operation throughout uh, North America and globally, uh, working closely with uh, Safeguard's global employment outsourcing unit. Then Gasper Paul, he's the Vice President of Operations with Team Quality Services, having more than 25 years of experience in the automotive and energy sectors. Randy Miller, a Senior Chair and Business Coach with Vistage International, and prior to that, he's been an executive in the staffing industry for 20 years and a U.S. Air Force Squadron Commander. Gabriel Wilkinson is joining us as well from the Source Match team. He's a recruitment operations manager uh, and he has more than 10 years of international recruitment uh, experience. Welcome uh, to our guests and we will dive right in with each and every question. That's a great question. Now, my career spans back for uh, two or three decades. So I was starting back where it was the uh, typical people come in, drop off their application, or you would even advertise that newspaper. Of course, all that's gone out of the window now. So now what we're seeing is that the typical recruiting, uh, the effect of recruiting is coming through word of mouth uh, or through uh, referrals. Uh, and honestly, to tell you, uh, because things have changed so much, we're seeing more of the internal recruiting than the external recruiting because the external, and this is what's happened because of the online recruiting, let's say uh, the, the different uh, job boards out there, people will apply and they will have you know, you can have 4,000 people applying and you find people all over the gamut. So you can spend a lot of time trying to get, get it narrowed down to, and you find people applying without the proper qualifications. So that's the reason why what we've really seen more so happening is a lot more toward the internal recruiting. And that also comes within people who have ties to other people on LinkedIn or maybe Facebook, but primarily LinkedIn who say, you know, I've known this person. I worked with him back, you know, uh, 10 years ago, I went to school this person. I just noticed that he is now working at this particular job and maybe this would be a good candidate. So that's how I've seen it really change is more of the employee or the internal referrals and just not because of their current friends, but because of past acquaintances that they've kept up with in LinkedIn for the past several uh, years. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of years that I've been in the industry, so it's changed drastically with time, but clearly over the short period, um, it's become more virtual with the progression of technology. Um, our geographic range has expanded greatly. The relevance of experience and expertise has become much more of a narrow focus. Our recruiting is much more intuitive with personality and cultural fits. It's become less subjective and more scientific based on data. We employ DIS, predictive indexing, and it's become more, com uh, more competitive and more selective. I started recruiting in January of 2013. So at the time, I noticed that many people were kind of desperate for work. So they were all recovering from the Great Recession. You know, it ended up being an employer's market at that time, uh, making it really easy to find talent and fill vacancies quickly. In more recent years, I'd say that the market has sort of flipped, right? So after recovering from the recession, companies were expanding rapidly and it made talent harder to find because they were just constantly hiring, right? So this led to companies utilizing third-party recruiting firms who specialized in the roles that they were trying to fill. Um, the next significant change, though, of course, comes with the pandemic in 2020. 
Um, many companies were letting employees go in order to stay afloat or simply as a precautionary measure to stay afloat, right? So while there was an increase in available candidates, many companies paused hiring throughout 2020. And that's a huge change when you see across the market that companies are pausing hiring and there's less openings. That's a huge, huge change. I believe that the hiring market is now somewhere between where it was at the beginning of 2013 and where it was at the beginning of 2020 uh, at this point. Because at the end of Q3 this year, we did start to see a lot of companies opening up vacancies again. And frankly, a lot of those were highlighting diversity and inclusion roles. So that was an interesting thing to see at the end of Q3. However, I would say we're still leaning towards an employer's market a little bit more where candidates are available. Um, there's more candidates than jobs at this point. Recruiting has changed um, immensely since my career started because being 70 years old, um, my career started back in the 70s. Um, obviously, we're uh, in a paper or even pencil environment at the time. So resumes, the you know, biggest challenge with the resume was to get it typed and have it perfect on an old standard computer even though we had electric uh, typewriters that was a major challenge for most of us to make sure that it was perfect because we wanted to give the overall impression of being uh, meticulous uh, and we didn't want errors even type overs on the resume so the other problem was distribution uh, you didn't have emails. You had no way electronically uh, to type a resume, let alone distribute it to multiple uh, people. And so the only way you had was either the old-fashioned way of putting it in the mail or literally dropping it off at somebody's office and then hoping that they uh, would get to see it. Then the other problem uh, for me is on the staffing side was the collection of those resumes and keeping them in the old four or five drawer file cabinets to then have to manually search for the type of background and uh, knowledge that you were looking for in a particular candidate. So depending on whether you were on the candidate side or the client side, uh, it was very labor intensive um, compared to today. For me personally, recruiting has become just so much more fast paced. Uh, speed and timing are key. We always want to fill positions in a timely manner, but you, and of course you do have to put in the, the time that's necessary to recruit the right person. But now uh, I find that over the years, technical know-how not only amongst uh, recruiting and hiring managers has increased, but also amongst job seekers. So with that kind of, uh, really technological savvy in the entire uh, process. It's, it's becoming more and more of a blink and you might miss it sort of world. And that's on both sides. If, if you take too long in your, your sourcing and screening of candidates, you're going to miss out on the top candidates. If you're uh, slow about your job search, you're going to miss out on the top jobs as well. That might seem really obvious, but just to address your question, that's the biggest change I've seen, those, those technological changes increasing the pace of recruiting as a whole. <laughs> <laughs>